we're going to look at a, a multicolored, multi-textured rock and uh, see what the colors and texture can tell us about the history of this rock. Uh, now we're uh, looking at the rock very close up in the comfort of a living room. But this rock came from mountainous areas of San Diego County and uh, has quite a story to tell. We notice uh, a big difference in colors, a section that's uh, full of white uh, with some large crystals of very platy black mineral. And over on that side, a very dark color, but full of tiny little reflecting flecks of biotite mica. Well, this uh, rock is an example of what happens when a magma intrudes and contacts uh, what was an ancient seafloor, the seafloor being the dark material, uh, which way back in Jurassic times, over 100 million years ago, was a very fine siltstone or mudstone on the bottom of a sea basin. And then, uh, hundreds of thousands of years later, a magma, a big mass of vo molten volcanic material from great depth, way down in the Earth's mantle, intruded beneath that sea floor, invaded its space, uh, found places where it could invade, uh, little cracks, and the cracks, cracks were filled in with molten igneous material. Uh, the igneous material uh, was very rich in quartz and feldspar, which are the light colored areas, but also present uh, was iron and magnesium in some of the silica that made for these large crystals of biotite mica. Well, this uh, view is a ballpoint pen tip uh, resting on a, a piece of rock. Uh, the rock is a mixture of both white and dark. There are individual little crystals, mostly of the white material. White material is kind of glassy and translucent, uh, therefore probably quartz. And occasional little uh, black bits, like right there. Uh, that black material is mica, the black variety called biotite, biotite mica. Uh, you might remember biotite starts with a B and black starts with a B. And that's the way you can separate uh, the two terms for mica, light and dark. Light color is called muscovite, like a citizen of Moscow. We're looking at the black variety called biotite. The rest of the material around it uh, appears to be mostly quartz uh, because it's shiny and translucent. But in some areas, uh, it's a very white and not translucent, uh, sort of like a broken china. And that is feldspar. So this uh, chunk of pegmatite dike material is a mixture then of three minerals primarily. Biotite mica, which is the black, quartz, which is the translucent one, and porcelainous white, which is feldspar. Another portion of the same rock, uh, this piece of pegmatite dike. So if you notice over here, uh, the crystals of biotite mica are very large, uh, macro-sized crystals. They grew to a large size uh, because uh, this massive and igneous material uh, began to slow down, and it was starting to cool very, very slowly. And with a long cooling time, that's the conditions necessary to make the very large macro-sized crystals. Uh, thus the name for this uh, large crystalline mass of igneous material, the name pegmatite for large crystals. Also in among those uh, large crystals of black or biotite mica, we see nice grains of white quartz, very crystalline white quartz, translucent, uh, sort of a gray-white in color. Uh, which means quartz. Uh, the dark section at uh, one time was seafloor sediment, you remember? Uh, the seafloor sediment was a very fine mudstone, but now the uh, material is all very crystalline. The translucent crystals of quartz and the black crystals of biotite mica. Well, that's what happens to it uh, when it is stewed and pressurized by an intr intruding magma, and uh, when temperature and pressure is very high, it changes those little Cellstone grains recrystallizes them into the larger size crystals of quartz and feldspar visible in this rock. So, uh, the product is a, an example of contact metamorphism, uh, where the contact zone, that sharp line between the dark and the black, shows us that there was uh, some very old material intruded later uh, during the mid Cretaceous by this igneous material, now called a pegmatite dike.